Let me share three things with you this morning. Number one, God will put you in places in your life you might not understand. Number one, God will put you in places in your life you might not understand. Notice in chapter 17, verse 8 and verse 9. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, or Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain slash take care of you. Now, what's so bad about this? That the word of the Lord came to Elijah. I mean, what? what's so bad about that? He tells him to go to Zarephath. What? Well, what's so bad about that? Well, you've got to know a little background information about where Elijah's life here up to this point. Elijah, known as the Tishbite, was from way out in the country. In fact, as I mentioned before, he was past the country, past the sticks, and he lived in the boondocks. And God told him to go deliver a message unto the king who was very powerful and very ungodly. His name was King Ahab. And basically what his message was, it was short and simple. King Ahab, God is going to hold up the reign for three years and people will die and there will be a famine and this will be because of your leadership or your sins. Now, naturally, the king didn't take so kindly of this. And he put a contract on Elijah's head there. So then God told Elijah after this, I want you to go to the brook. Place filled with water there. You go there. Just run and hide at the brook. No big deal. Well, God said, you're going to drink from the brook and I'm going to send ravens twice a day in the morning and the evening and they're going to bring your food and you're going to eat. So you're going to be sitting there by the lake or by the brook and, and then twice a day I'll send the ravens there to bring you food and you'll drink from the brook. And that's where I want you to stay at. No big deal. God had him there for three years. Now think about this for a minute. You, ravens twice a day, and water. Three years. That's what God told him. Three years, Elijah, Elijah stayed there. Just him, God, the ravens twice a day, and water. That's it. Three years. I could understand a little rest and relaxation, but I think we're carrying this too far. Three years. I'm not talking to anybody. Just you and God. You see, God had a plan the whole time. God had something, a uh, plan or something in mind that He was leading Elijah to do. But before He did that, He had to send Elijah to boot camp. Elijah needed some training. He needed some polishing. He needed to learn how to trust in God. And you see, sometimes God will put play you in places in your life that you might not understand. If you look at verse 8, it says that the Lord finally, if this was after three years, the Lord came to him, the word of the Lord came and said that you're going to Zarephath. No big deal. Until you know what Zarephath really is. It was a place of trials. The verb in this word actually means to melt. The noun actually means crucible. In other words, like a big melting pot that will uh, 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 hold or abstain a lot of heat. And he said, this, this is where you're going to go. In other words, you're going to leave the brook. You're going to, where you've been for three years, and you're going to go to a place filled with trials. And God said, I'm going to go. Well, 
Zarephath was about 100 miles away. And Elijah, of course, went on foot. Now keep in mind, as you're traveling 100 miles, either by animals or by foot, you've got to remember there's a contract on his head. King Ahab has not forgotten about what has taken place. He's got a contract. If you can bind Elijah, kill him. It's all this time that Elijah's doing that. He's walking, he's going to Zar uh, Zarephath and a place, going to a place of trials. You know, there are some things that happens in your life, in my life. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's a place to where you're at right now and you're saying, you know what, I just don't like this. I don't understand this. Well, maybe God's got you there for a particular reason. You see, God, when you live the Christian life and people think it's boring or people think there's no excitement in it, I want to tell you, God will put you in places in your life that you might not understand. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number two, not only will God put you in places in your life you might not understand, but number two, God will put people in your life you might see as unfruitful. God will place people in your life that you might see unfruitful. Notice verse number 10. And he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he had came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there, gathering up sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little drink of water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering up two sticks, that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and thy, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until that day the Lord send his rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fell, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Elijah was probably blindsided by what had just taken place. In verse number 8 and 9, we learn where the word, the word of the Lord had came to Elijah. In verse 9, he says that I will, there will be a woman there that will sustain me or take care of me. In other words, once you reach the city, you will run into a woman there, and, and, and you'll know who she is, and she will take care of you. He gets there after traveling 100 miles, he's dying of thirst, and he finds a woman there that's picking up sticks to start a fire. And keep in mind this woman's attitude. She is there to fix, uh, uh, build a fire. She has a little bit of oil, a little bit of meal left to make some biscuits for her and her son, and then she plans on dying. In other words, she's planning on her last meal. Elijah comes up on the scene and says, Ma'am, I need some water. Can you give me some water? So she starts and she goes for the water. And he says, ma'am, fix me a biscuit too. She says, listen to me. So help me God. I just have a little bit of meal. I have a little bit of oil. All I have enough is to fix for me and my son. And it will be our last meal. And then we're going to... 